YouTube channel flowing electrons and so in this video we'll be talking about station auxiliary supply system okay so let's begin with our video uh, see a substation we all know that a substation is a place where the power flow or the transmission of the power takes place okay but a substation has its own power consumption and some of the equipments used in the substation are so very highly critical for the proper operation of the protection system that they must always be powered up and we cannot afford to have an interruption in their power supply because if they are not if these devices are not energized uh, in case of fault, the protection system may not function and which can be a disastrous situation. Okay, so we need an auxiliary power supply in a substation. Okay, so there are, now we'll go see this diagram. Okay, there are in the substation, if you see, there are two types of power supplies. It's one is AC power supply and the another one is DC power supply okay so if you see in this diagram uh, the portion of the diagram which is colored in the red is our DC power supply system while the rest which is in the black is our AC power supply system okay so so if you see uh, the start this is the this is our 33 kV bus in the substation and connected to that bus is a station transformer station auxiliary transformer which transforms 33 kV into 220 volt and which is then fed to the AC distribution board ACDB okay and in case of this AC power supply failure station supply station transformer fails to provide us with the AC power then this DG set is activated it may be activated automatically or manually and then it supplies the AC supply to the AC distribution board okay and from this AC distribution board we uh, we give AC supply to various AC loads now what are the AC loads in the substation okay so uh, a substation has a lighting load which is AC heating and ventilation okay and then there are motors used in the operating mechanism of various switch gear like the motor like motors are used in circuit breakers and isolate motorized isolators for that we require AC supply okay and that comes under AC supply system okay so generally it is 220 volt AC supply all right and then this also uh, this AC supply is given to the battery charger okay now our, our DC supply system starts AC supply is given to the battery charger in the normal condition when the AC supply is present uh, battery charger uh, give, supplies load to the DC load and at the same time it keeps charging the battery battery set okay and when the AC supply fails, let's say this station transformer fails to provide the AC supply as well as this DG set uh, fails to provide the AC supply and there is no AC supply to the battery charger. Now the battery set will automatically supply load to our DC, uh, DC load whatever there are in the substation. Now what are the DC loads in the substation? DC loads. Uh, DC loads are the essential loads in the substation uh, essential loads like uh, relays meters energize, uh, energizing the tripping and the closing coil of the circuit breakers then DC emergency lighting in the control room okay see this for this uh, essential loads we use the DC supply system so that so that if so that if the if the AC supply fails there is the battery set that can provide uh, that can keep these the essential uh, devices energized okay 
and in the meantime the ac supply can be restored okay and dc uh, generally dc voltage of 110 volt or 220 volt dc is used in the substation okay so this was the overview of the auxiliary supply system that is used in the substation thank you so much guys uh, in the next part we will be covering uh, this uh, auxiliary power supply system in the details thank you so much guys do visit our website electricalfundas.com and our new website which is under construction flowingelectrons.com thank you so much guys